Hey everyone, Naomi Meredith here, and I am very excited for this winter theme STEM Tech Co. show episode. So I am a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher, and I have such a love and passion for books still. When I was in the regular classroom, I had so much pride in my classroom library. I am obsessed about reading, and so I did keep a lot of my books. I gave a bunch away to be used in classrooms, but I did keep all of my winter books because there's just something about the holidays and the winter time and those books are just so magical to me and they're a great way to implement STEM into your classroom. So today I'm going to be sharing with you three different winter theme books, not holiday specific, but winter in general. So if you need something going back to school, these are a great way to read in your story and do some hands-on activities. So the first story, this is great for the younger students, is the book 10 on a Sled. It is a rhyming story, so it has that rhythm, and you can talk about all the rhyming words with those younger students. And then there is some counting involved. Obviously, you can think of the number 10 on the sled. So as the animals are traveling down the hill, more animals get on the sled, um, and there's 10 of them. So you could probably guess what the STEM challenge is. So students are given materials to create a sled to fit 10 animals on the sled. You can use whatever materials that you want for this and at the end I'll put the link to where you can find all of this and how you can get it all easily set up for your class but you can give them whatever um, for this challenge I gave them straws pipe cleaners Chanel straws so straws pipe cleaners and popsicle sticks as their materials. I didn't give them tape because I feel like they needed more of a challenge and it helped them understand how pipe cleaners bend and twist and they can connect things and then for the animals um, we had little animals, so each of the animals are from the story, so it helps them retell the story also. Um, but it's the animals from the story, and then on the back, I taped a Unifix cube, um, and the kids can do this too. Um, but we taped a Unifix cube so the animals could stand up. So they were tasked with the challenge, how can you build a sled that can fit all 10 animals on the sled? Now, the challenge is for them to fit the animals. I didn't make it so that the sled has to move and also fit the animals but if your kids need an extra challenge that could be the best next step is how can you create a sled that moves that keeps all the animals on top all 10 animals um, so that's a great way to do that the kids can definitely depending on the age um, since I have a grid of the animals they can just cut them out they're just squares and tape them um, so that could be something the kids can do as well you don't necessarily have to do that step so this one is quite the challenge it takes longer than you think um, but it's really great for story retell, again, that hands-on component, and then counting because they had to make sure they could fit all 10 on the sled. I know at this time of year and winter time, um, I, this isn't, I guess, holiday specific. It can be. Um, but a lot of classrooms I know read gingerbread man story variations. So the picture I'm showing you is just one version. I actually own this version, but I own a lot of versions of the gingerbread man too. Um, so depending on whichever one you read, this STEM challenge is to give an alternate ending. So most gingerbread stories, the traditional ones, the gingerbread man goes into the river, climbs on the fox's back, and he gets gobbled up. Well, what if the gingerbread man was a little more smart and figured out a way to cross the river? So for this challenge, the kids are helping out the gingerbread man, and they are creating a way for the gingerbread man to float across the river. So this is great for sinking and floating. Um, there's a great video from SciShow Kids about sinking and floating, um, but how can the gingerbread man get across the river? This was actually built by a kindergartner. I did not build this for the picture. I'm not kidding you. Um, again, I did the same trick, which is funny. Um, we cut out little gingerbreads and then we taped it to a Unifix cube so it can stand up on top. They could create their own if you wanted, um, but you give them different materials. So we talk about what materials can sink and float. So I purposely give materials that won't float to see what they can do with it. Um, there is cardboard. They Obviously cardboard does float, but over time it can be saturated with the water and they'll start to notice that. 
Um, so they can create different solutions. Um, oh, I just showed you that one, but this one is super cute. They grabbed two cups. I think what we did is we gave them a limit. You can grab any 10 of the items we provide, um, bubble wrap, little cups, tape, you get 10, any 10, but that's all you get. So they chose two and they chose some foil and then they taped them together which was so amazing. So they come up with really creative solutions. And again, they can retell the story and say, hey, here's an alternate ending to the story. He got a little bit of engineer skills, that gingerbread man, and found another solution. Um, another book series that I love in this family that I nannied for, for forever when I was a classroom teacher, Every year they would buy me one of the books in this series. So Snowman at Night is one of them, but if you have any of their other books, you could do this too. I love these books, they're so cute. Um, but with this STEM, ch STEM challenge, they're building in a different way. They are building through coding. And so they have different snowman cards that match the big picture. So you can see in the example I'm showing you, um, you guys know I don't know where to point. Um, you can see in the example I'm showing you, there's a snowman with an outfit. It goes along with the story, because snowman at night like come to life. And the kids have the little cards that match the picture and they have to code the robot to build the snowman in order and how what would the order be putting on the different accessories. So you wouldn't obviously, you can see this picture, you wouldn't start with the glasses because there's nowhere to put the glasses on. So the kids have to build the snowman and then what order would it go in. Um, this is the Code and Go mouse. I've talked about that in another episode. I'm gonna do another one about robots for kids. Um, um, but you could use B-Bots, whatever, dash and dot, or not dot, don't use dot because dot can't move. <laughs> you don't want to use dot for this one. Um, but this is a Code and Go mouse. So this example is like a little reindeer snowman. And then they put the cards in a different order. So they didn't do a straight line. They did more of a grid layout and then coded the mouse that way. So just a fun way to retell the story and different snowman personalities that can go with any of those snowman books, really. But I hope you enjoyed those few little suggestions of some winter books that you might already have, or you can find them online. You could even find a Kindle version. Um, but if you have any questions or any other suggestions, I love to chat on in Instagram. So you can find me at Naomi Meredith underscore. And then for all these materials that you're wondering, where can I get this? Is this already done for me? If you go to my website, NaomiMeredith.com slash STEM winter stem stories it's here naomi meredith.com slash winter stem stories i have that all laid out for you so you didn't have to take any notes but also links to the um, resources and the books so you can get started you can plan for january and have everything to go so thank you so much again for joining me for another episode of the stem tech co show i will see you guys all soon